Hey Vault Hunters, JV here, and today I'm sharing my guide for the Circle of Slaughter. Similar to Borderlands 1 and 2, Borderlands 3 has a wave-based arena mode called Circle of Slaughter, and these arenas are scattered across multiple planets, and they're a little off the beaten path. They are something that you can easily miss if you're not looking for them. So today, we're going to look at where to unlock these, how to tackle them, best strategies, and everything you need to know to dive right in. So let's get started. Circle of Slaughter is a series of three arenas featuring multiple rounds and multiple waves of enemies, and then you're gonna fight a boss at the very end. So it's more like an arena activity compared to Proving Grounds, which is more like a time trial. In order to progress through each round, you need to kill all the enemies per wave until you complete said round. And the really nice thing about Circle of Slaughter is that when you die, it just resets you to the start of the round that you're on. So for example, if you're on wave three of round three and you die, it's just gonna put you back at the beginning of round three. So you don't have to start all the way over. However, if you fast travel away from the area, that will completely reset your progress. So keep that in mind. Circle of Slaughter also has randomized optional objectives like get 10 melee kills or 10 grenade kills stuff of that nature and if you complete these you get a reward chest at the end of the round and what's also nice is that these rounds probably last like three to five minutes i would say some of them are longer depending on your difficulty level so you have plenty of time to complete these optional objectives and they will always be displayed in the top right corner this is also a repeatable activity you can do circle of slaughter as many times as you'd like you can do them back to back it doesn't really matter, and you can also jump in these immediately when you unlock them. You don't have to do this just at the end of the game. Some other things to know before we hop into how you unlock these arenas. First off, difficulty scales with True Vault Hunter mode and Mayhem mode. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. If you ratchet up the difficulty, you're going to run into more badasses, which is great because that's going to give you great loot but at the same time, it's gonna make it more difficult. So always keep that in mind. And also because of the amount of badasses that show up in each arena, this is a great source of legendary world drops. So if you're going after that Lucian's Call, for example, or another really good world drop like the Speed Loading Hellwalker, then this is a great area to do this. However, it is less efficient than farming. But I'd argue this is more fun because you're actively doing something, you're moving around, you're not just repeating a loop of farming one enemy over and over and over. Between each round, you actually have some time to breathe, and that's when you can go and loot stuff that's been dropped during combat that you couldn't, you know, just run over and grab that cool sniper, just, you know, leave it, you can grab it in between rounds. But most importantly, you can visit the vendors that are on the outside of these arenas between rounds. And that is absolutely something I would recommend. Go refill your ammo between every single round, especially if you're playing on a higher difficulty. Also keep in mind, if you want to play with other people, you can use the matchmaking system via the social tab to find a group for Circle of Slaughter. And the nice thing is you don't have to unlock these. And I'm about to show you guys how to unlock everything but you don't have to do that if you use matchmaking. However, you can't select the specific circle of slaughter to go into through this system. So you can't pick the arena. You're just gonna get plopped with other people who are also using the matchmaking system. Let's go over how to unlock the circles of slaughter. So these are very similar to the proving grounds. They're easy to miss and they're found in specific areas of the game that are unlocked by playing the story. So long story short, all areas that you need to unlock all three arenas will be unlocked by the end of the story. So that means you can just fast travel to these areas, go to the location, find the new place where you can now fast travel to, and then you'll be able to do each arena. And of course, I'll show you guys specifically where you need to go as I talk about each arena. The first circle is Cistern of Slaughter, and you run into this very early in the game. It's unlocked in Meridian Metroplex on Promethea. So you guys know right after you leave Pandora for the first time and go to the first planet and meet Lorelei, all you need to do is travel to this underground sort of area, and that's where you'll find the world, you know, fast travel wall, so to speak, and go through the loading screen, and that'll bring you to the Cistern of Slaughter. So this one features pretty much all variants of wildlife that you run across throughout the course of the game. So we're talking about, you know, Pandora wildlife like Rax, Skag, 
spider ants, and then also Promethea. You're going to see some Ratch and Eden Six. You're going to see some Tyrants and uh, Grogs and stuff like that. And also Necrotefeo, some Vanda and Manticore. So really, everything that's a creature, you're going to see it in this arena. As per usual with these enemies, you only need incendiary and corrosive items and abilities because they only have flesh and armor. So that's what you're going to run into. I wouldn't really super worry about shock abilities unless you're running a specific shock build that you think might be worth it or you're running a mayhem modifier that supports that kind of playstyle. This is a trend you'll see throughout each circle, but essentially each wave and each round is comprised of similar enemies and then they'll kind of combine some enemy types together in a particular round. And a lot of the times you'll see different, you know, exotic variants of these enemy types that will counter what you're using. So for example, you'll see a flaming spider ant or something like that, or a shocking jabber. So you need to be able to, you know, bring a loadout that is able to adapt to these enemy types. The one enemy type I would really watch out for are the prismatic racks. And the issue with these is they swoop in. You guys know if you've played Borderlands games before, Racks suck. I really hate them because if they down you or if anything else downs you and you're trying to get back up and fight for your life, then you have to deal with these, you know, creatures that are flying around. And the badass prismatic racks are pretty much immune to most types of elements. And that sucks for me because I run an elemental build. And it's probably something you're going to run into as well. So my best advice is to get underneath this sort of, you know, catwalk walkway here and force these prismatic racks to come underneath to you. If you're a Mara like me, you can just phase grasp them and burn them down that way. But if you're a different vault hunter, I would try to use cryo abilities and weapons in order to slow these things down and then burn them down that way. Because Again, they're just super annoying. The AI is really annoying, so you need to kind of trap them and then kill them that way. The final boss for the cistern is the Tremendous Rex, and this guy has only armor. So obviously you're gonna use corrosive to melt through that armor, and he shoots a bunch of like rock projectiles. So just practice your side strafing here to avoid the projectiles. I mean, that's essentially how you avoid any damage in Borderlands. So pretty much just rely on those things that you've learned throughout your playthrough in order to down this guy. He's pretty easy. The second arena is called the Slaughter Shaft, and this is unlocked via Conrad's Hold, that area on Pandora. So this is the second time when you come back to Pandora throughout the course of the story, this is when you'll be able to unlock this arena. From the fast travel point for this area, you're gonna kind of run through the same basic path that you have to for the story, and then it's gonna be off to the side, you know, versus the main path that you need to go. So that's where you're gonna find this area, go through, and then you can run this arena. The slaughter shaft features all variants of COV enemies. So these are going to be Tinks, Maniacs, Zealots, Goliaths, pretty much anything you can expect from the COV they will have in this arena. So this one is tricky because you're gonna need all kinds of items and abilities to counter shields, armor, and flesh. So bring incendiary weapons and abilities, shock and corrosive, make sure you have everything equipped. What I really like about this arena is there's a ton of cover. There's kind of a safe area near the start and then there's a safe house kind of in the back where there's some stairs. You can use both of those to get cover whenever you need to, but watch out for anointed because this is a COV based activity. You're going to get anointed tanks and every single variation of that. So these guys are always tough no matter what make sure you are prioritizing them when they appear. The final boss here is the Titan, which is a variant of Goliath. It's got a big hammer, and then once you shoot its head, it sort of you know transforms into a typical Goliath, but it's massive. However, it's pretty easy to take down. So just use incendiary to burn this guy's flesh down. It's pretty easy. You can shoot at its head to turn it into its you know Goliath, and it'll attack anything that's within its range but do that at a safe distance. Obviously, if you shoot a Goliath and it runs at you, you're gonna have a bad time. That's a general rule, no matter what you're doing. So you can use this guy against you know, its enemies when it spawns, but when it's time to take it down, put on your best fire weapons and go to town. 
The final circle of slaughter is the Slaughter Star 3000. And this is in a completely separate area, but first you need to go to Desolation's Edge on Necro Tefeo in order to unlock it. Like I said, it's a little bit different. So you're gonna need to hop in a vehicle, travel over, and then this is an area you visit during the course of the story and it kind of tells you to turn around. I'm sure you guys remember. There's a wanted sign on the wall here for the Slaughter Star 3000. Once you grab that, it sends you back to Sanctuary where you'll need to navigate to this specific location, use the drop pod, then you will unlock this arena for future use. This is very similar to unlocking a Proving Grounds. This arena features all variants of Maliwan enemies. So you're going to run into those troopers, the heavyweights, the nogs, you guys know the drill there. And then you're gonna have some corrosive armor only enemies, you know, the ones that you face when you're fighting Katagawa in the course of the story. So you're gonna need a variety of all kinds of items and abilities to tackle this incendiary for flesh, shock for shields and corrosive for armor. The only enemy I had trouble with were the Lich Nogs. These guys have huge shields. It's a very specific type of Nog that you don't face anywhere else as far as I can remember. But these guys have massive shields. Sometimes they have armor as well. So really focus these guys down because again, Nogs also shield other enemies. So these should be your priority whenever they're on the field. Also, pack a really good corrosive weapon as well because some of these ballista are particularly tough. Most of them are a pushover, which is interesting, but you'll see these specific kind of boss-like ballista that will appear and make sure you burn those guys down quickly because they have a lot of health. The final bosses here, yes, there are two, are two giant robots, basically giant ballista and they have their own specific abilities. They're called Blue Fire and Red Rain. So once they spawn, the Blue Fire will be the first one. Once you get Blue Fire down to a certain health, Red Rain will spawn on the other side of the arena. Now I'm gonna give you guys more specific tips because this is by far the more difficult boss encounter out of all of the Circles of Slaughter. These guys are really tough unless you approach this from a certain way. First off, before this final round starts and then you face the bosses, make absolutely certain that you are refilling your ammo at the vendor. This is absolutely key because depending on the difficulty, you will, I mean, this, this fight will take you like 10 minutes or longer even. So make sure you are at your maximum ammo count and also get multiple corrosive weapons, not just one to rely on because more than likely you're gonna run out of ammo. Focus on the critical spots for these big robots and these Pacific Rim slash Transformer type enemies all have like circles on their legs and then up on kind of their shoulder blades that when you shoot them, they'll kind of suffer a critical hit and then they'll go into like a recharge mode and that's when they're open to shooting them. Otherwise, they're, you know, jumping around, doing all kinds of crazy moves and then you need to watch out for their special attacks. Blue Fire has this barrage of explosives that will down you, like almost no matter what, unless you've got some really good defensive abilities. So make sure you're near uh, another enemy that's there so you can get yourself back up with Fight for Your Life or find some cover. And then Red Rain also has kind of a missile barrage that's going to home in on you. So I would definitely watch out for that too. This is something you're probably already going to do, but it's worth noting, don't stand in the middle of the arena, like equidistant between Blue Fire and Red Rain, because both of them will hit you with their attacks if you do that. So if you're gonna take down Blue Fire, for example, stay closer on his side so you're avoiding Red Rain's attacks, but obviously make sure and watch out for that huge explosive special move that he does, because that will wreck you. To cap off the video, here's a few general tips that will apply to all of these arenas. Just some things I picked up after doing them multiple times. First off, don't be afraid to lower your difficulty. I know it's tempting to hop in on True Vault Hunter mode in Mayhem 3 and try and do these, but trust me, the people that are showing you, you know, Insta Kill, Grave Ward, you know, Mayhem 3 builds, that stuff doesn't work on a larger scale. So don't be afraid to lower your difficulty and tackle this stuff at a reasonable rate. You don't wanna spend an hour, for example, doing each of these runs because that's not hyper efficient. If you are running these through 30 minutes at a time on Mayhem 2, that's much better than an hour at a time on Mayhem 3, so keep that in mind. If your primary goal is to farm loot and get the best stuff, you're trying to get a really good Hellwalker, for example, 
Make sure and complete those optional objectives. You get an opportunity to do that every single round. And if you're maximizing your efficiency on the correct difficulty for you know how good your Vault Hunter is or how good your build is, then you can really farm loot pretty quickly because those chests have opportunities to give you multiple legendaries per optional objective. So make sure you're doing that. And finally, keep in mind there's no timer for the Circles of Slaughter. This is not a time trial like Proving Grounds. This is something I mentioned before, but don't hesitate to take it slow to hide and recover your health and shields if you need to. I always like to be as efficient as possible, but dying is the enemy of efficiency. Just remember that. So make sure you're investing in skills that you know keep up your survivability, reduce incoming damage, increase your health, health regeneration, shield recovery, whatever it's going to be in order to keep you alive. Make sure you invest in that and don't hesitate to hide if you need to recover that stuff. And also don't hesitate to pause and switch around your loadout. I found myself doing that multiple times, especially on the Slaughter Star. When I was facing a lot of Corrosive, I would switch Amara's element to Corrosive. If I was facing a lot of Shields, I would switch her element over to Shock. So don't hesitate to mix and match your abilities and items according to whatever you're facing, even within that run. It's very smart to plan your loadouts before you start. That's a really good tip. That's why I do these videos. You can plan accordingly, but also don't hesitate to mix things up in between the rounds because that may be the difference between you completing this and you struggling. All right, guys, that's everything you need to know to get started in the circles of slaughter. So in the comment section below, tell me which method you use to farm legendaries. What is your preferred method? I'm sure a lot of people watching are using the grave ward because it's so quick and easy especially on Mayhem 3 when you can roll your, you know, specific modifiers to suit your build and, you know, tackle that thing in like five seconds flat. But in my opinion, these circles are fun. It's really fun to run through and do like 30 minute rounds and get like 10 legendaries. It's nice. So share what you do below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications for more Borderlands 3 content. Stay up to date with all of my content by following me on social media and join my community over on our partner Discord server. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.